Thanks, but we are back at it. We're doing the King Project. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to talk with you guys once again in regards to Dr. King and some of the different things uh, that he was able to accomplish with his legacy and really give you my little spin on uh, some of the things and why they went down. Uh, today's quote uh, is in reference to a response that he uh, had to the question of the criticism of why he was blamed for a lot of the violence that went down in Chicago. This was on the Merv Griffin Show of 1967. Uh, here's the quote in part. When looking at a physician who, through his skills, through his medical ingenuity, discovers cancer in a patient and blaming the doctor for causing the cancer, it's usually the other way around. We praise the physician for using ingenuity to bring out into the open something that is needed to be discovered and something that can be cured if caught early enough. And this is exactly what we have done. Again, he was responding to the question of the criticism that he sustained uh, for some of the Chicago violence that they were victims of. Uh, Dr. King and the Southern Leadership Christian Conference uh, joined forces with two other groups. Uh, one of those groups was called the American Friends Service Committee. Uh, they were really a relief action based uh, group initially that evolved to really focus on race relations and improvement in the U.S. Uh, the other group uh, was the Coordinating Council of Community Organizations. That was a Chicago based group that had already organized mass nonviolent protests in the city with relative success. And they wanted to up the ante by joining forces with the two other groups that I mentioned and really look for change within Chicago, within the North. Uh, if you will, at the time. Um, again, all three groups were nonviolent groups. They had did all their uh, philosophy and initi initiatives uh, in a nonviolent way. Um, they were tackling some major issues, four of them uh, within this movement, uh, one of them being quality education, transportation, job access. And the biggie of this one and the violence associated with it, in my opinion, was the open housing issue. Uh, this meaning eliminating the sale and rental of private housing free of discrim discriminatory practices and policies. Um, on August 5th, Dr. King led a demonstration. They walked through an all-white neighborhood uh, where they were being met with bottles, bricks, and being beaten. A lot of people viewed this march, this movement, as a suicidal campaign uh, in the first place. And so subsequently, when this all went down, um, naturally, I believe Dr. King was blamed for a lot of the violence that was provoked upon uh, some of the people who were uh, involved with that. Um, Dr. King released a statement um, and he talked about how he just had never experienced such hostility and such hateful uh, resistance to the nonviolence movement that he, he had uh, initiated down in the South compared to where he was at now, Chicago, the North. And, you know, by the end of August, um, with you know, some of the different things that had went down, um, there was an announcement made, uh, I believe an appeasement announcement uh, by the uh, Chicago Housing Authority to put uh, height limits on some of the public housing and to really have the Mortgage Bankers Association uh, not have any uh, discriminatory race uh, requirements or uh, issues on top of their mortgages. So it was something that that was very, very big in the announcement, very, very big in the philosophy of it all. But ultimately, at least on the open housing uh, issue, city officials never really implemented the open housing uh, policies. Um, it came in the form of 1968, actually, under the Fair Housing Act two years later. You know, this was an economic battle for the then 37-year-old Dr. King. Um, he received, again, a lot of heavy criticism, and a lot of people, again, really thought this was a suicidal mission, and it ended up producing a book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos of Community. Um, you know, in that book, it really emphasized the harsh realities of the social system and the resistance to change uh, in the North, uh, in part. And I just thought this was a great uh, example of how Dr. King was able to take criticism uh, and take a lot of a, a lot of negative things and spin them in a way where ultimately change um, happened in our history and ultimately he really again set the template for being able to go out there and go through adversity. Dr. King uh, directly received uh, some of the violence and hostility by having uh, bricks and bottles. One, I think there is document that he was hit with a brick and, um, 
you know, injured. And so, you know, he stood strong with the power of kindness. He stood strong in the face of adversity. He stood strong to what he believed in, which is so admirable. I mean, even um, in the beginning of this whole campaign, he moved his whole family uh, to Chicago so he could be closer to the movement, more involved. Um, so he was all in. And he just, again, always really set the standard when it came to really doing the things that really mattered. And I had to share that with you today. I was really proud to kind of just really learn more about the Chicago movement, the Chicago campaign of 1966. Um, there's a lot of things that you hear about, but you don't really hear some of the good juicy details that I was hoped to able to capture with you today. And I really appreciate the opportunity for you guys to let me do that. This is Chuck Grigsby, G Unity Worldwide. We're doing the King Project all month long of October. And I really appreciate the support. And we will come with some more great material of our history. Thank you so much. Take care, guys.